Hey, how's it going? So I um, thought I'd uh, revisit a topic, had some more to say on it, uh, and maybe structure things a little bit. So this video is about how to speed up, how to get your route done faster, okay? <laughs> and again, I've already broached this topic before, but I wanted to take another swing at it. So here we go. All right, first of all, disclaimer, um, just so you know, you are responsible for what you do on your route. My tips here are just that, they're tips. They're not going to work for everybody. Some of these things don't work for me. For example, um, I know some people that could give you a tip of, hey, just memorize all your packages and then don't mark them. <laughs> you know, I could give you that advice, but that wouldn't work for me. It works for some people, though. So, again, do this at, be a professional. And also um, to, if I tell you to do something uh, and your supervisor says something else, uh, do what your supervisor says, okay? You can't just go up to your postmaster and be like, well, this guy on the internet said, it doesn't work like that, okay? All right, so moving on, how to speed up, how to get faster on a rural route, here we go. First of all, casing, how do we get faster with casing? Well, um, I think it's always good, especially if it's a new route, that you take a moment to learn the case a little bit, look at it, figure out how it travels. I know you're tempted to go in and just start shoving magazines in where they belong, but uh, <clears throat> it's good to kind of at least take a moment, step back and look at the case first um, and notice where it travels. If you're from that town, that might help a little bit as far as knowing where the streets are and things like that. Um, but yeah, take a moment to learn the case. Uh, along with this, uh, make a case map or a parcel sheet uh, and use it when you can't find an address. So if you're looking for, you've got a piece of mail in your hand and you're not familiar with the case and it says like 322 Main Street, right? Well, the type, uh, the street names are very, very small uh, on on the case. So you're looking all through these big shelving units for this tiny little word that says Main Street. Very difficult. That's why one of the things I do is I make one of these, a parcel sheet. So for my for this route, it's got six rows um, that travel uh, carousels. So you do all the addresses on the top going around the whole shelving unit, um, and then you go down to the next row and so on. So you've got, um, oops. These are the first three rows, okay? The top three rows on the case. These are the bottom three rows on the case. And again, the street names are just listed in order. Now, what I use this for is I write the number of the parcel. So if I've got something for 322 Western, I just find Western and I write 322 underneath it, okay? So I can just look at this piece of paper, know I got a parcel. But also when you're casing, if I'm looking for Western, I can look on here and try to find Western Street rather than trying to find it on that big case. Okay, something like this helps a lot. Now there's different ways of laying these out. You can color code them if you want. You can do it as a table. Um, there's different ways to do it, but having something like this is gonna be much easier to look at a piece of paper and find an address, much easier than looking at that whole case. Okay, done preaching on that. <laughs> All right, um, if you can't address, locate an address quickly, just set the piece of mail down. So you're sitting here looking all over, you can't find it. Um, you think it should be here, it's not. Just set it down. The address on the letter could be wrong, could be from another route, could be a PO box. It's not worth the hassle of trying to find that one piece of mail. You don't wanna spend 10 minutes on one piece of mail. You've got too much to do. So set it aside. Maybe you'll come across it later, when you're casing something else, um, you can always take it along with you. They say take it for a ride. And if you come on that address on the street, you can put it on. Just, it's not worth trying to search for it forever at your case, okay? Uh, moving on, consider taking items on the side if it makes sense and it's doable in your vehicle. So obviously, <laughs> the less things you're putting in the case, the less time it will take the case. If you've got a big stack of newspapers and you don't put them in your case, well, <laughs> You're not going to spend that half hour putting newspapers in your case, and you might spend less time pulling down too. So if you can take things on the side, right, you have to know yourself what you can do in your own vehicle, um, might, might be a good idea. I like to take my DPS on the side because it easily saved me an hour at the case. That's me. Everyone's a little bit different. But yeah, if you can, that's going to save you time casing. 
um, perhaps collate boxers rather than case box holders rather than casing them. So if you've got box holders and they're kind of sloppy and they don't case really well, well, you can, what you can do is as you're pulling that, just pull the box holder, then the male box holder male. As you're pulling down, you can do that. So collate, put them together as you're pulling down rather than trying to shove everything in the case. Okay. If these things are sitting there in order, that's something you can do. Okay. I don't like collating, but I know people in my office do it very well <laughs> and it saves them lots of time and headaches at their case. So collating can be good, especially if things are getting tighter. But like I said, it doesn't work for me, it might work for you. Um, even if you like casing most things, think about parts of your route where you may not want to. So even though you like casing everything, having nice little tacos, that might be you, well, yeah, um, there might be part of your route where that doesn't make sense. You might have to dismount go into an apartment building where there's lots of boxes right there. In that case, uh, you might be better off, at least for that portion of your route, just grabbing a chunk of mail and then sorting it at the, at the mailbox. Okay, so think about places where it might make sense to do that. Okay, um, case in an order that makes sense in your office and use a checklist so you don't have to think about what to do next. So this is just really I mean, you have to be flexible, obviously, but if you just kind of have an order of how you do things, like I do my ordered flat first, flats first, and then I do my, and then I do my um, loose flats or vice versa, you know, just whatever order you normally do things, you know, just have that order. So you're not wondering, hmm, what should I do next? You don't want to waste time doing that. Okay. So have it on a piece of paper or even just have it in your head, but an order in which you do things. Okay, um, if you do case DPS, so if you are going to put your DPS in, um, sometimes if you got like 10 pieces of mail and you've already got a flat sitting in there, you try to shove the mail in, it just won't go. Sometimes just sticking one piece of mail in and then kind of shoehorning the rest of it in works pretty well, okay? Um, whatever you are casing, hold the stack close to the case so you aren't wasting time making large moves. So I've done this. I've, I've laid down some flats on my desk, and then I grab a magazine, turn, and put it in, and then I grab another one, turn, and put it in, you know? And it feels like I'm going fast because I'm making fast movements, but really you're better off holding the stack and going shoo, 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 right there, right? If you make smaller movements, it's going to be faster, okay? Even though it feels fast going like that, it's not. <laughs> Okay, um, organize parcels faster. So again, do what works for you, but here's some ideas. Uh, if you're new to a route, use load truck to organize the packages. So load truck um, is a feature in your scanner and it tells you the section number one through six. So like ones are at the beginning of the route, threes and fours are in the middle, six is at the end, right? And then it also gives you uh, a sequence number. The sequence number is like, okay, this is the third person you deliver to, so that's number three. This is the 438th person you deliver to, so that's 438. So it doesn't say that when you scan, but it shows it on the screen. So if you write the sequence number on all the packages, you could just put them in order physically, kind of like on Amazon Sunday, just the numbers are bigger. <laughs> Okay, um, write the pet large package, packages on a parcel sheet. So again, just write the number on something like this. Okay? Some people even have all the numbers and they just circle it. But again, whatever works for you, that's what I do, okay? Um, I don't like going by memory. <laughs> I like having, looking and seeing how many I have down. So this is an extra step. It does take a little bit of time, but I think it's faster than parcel markers because I can do it right at the truck rather than at the case. Um, just put them in order. So you could either cluster them in groups one through six, and then as you're out on the route, put the ones together. And then once you're through the ones, put the twos in order, pull them up, and so on. Um, some people use the shelf and the LLV for that, putting things in order. Um, or like I said, if you got that sequence number, you could just have them completely in order. Okay, just, okay, 438 goes before 452, you know, that kind of thing. Um, Organize them directly at your vehicle as possible. So what I used to do is I used to grab them, take them to my case, put my parcel marker in, and then go put them on a cart, and then grab the next one and so on. So I'd kind of be sorting them at my case, then I'd wheel them out to my vehicle and sort them again. Just a waste of time. So if you can somehow, you know, you either with load truck or a piece of paper like this, 
sort through them at your vehicle, that's going to be faster because you're not wasting time moving it from one cart to another and then and then wheeling that cart onto your vehicle. Got to go soon. <laughs> Hurry up. All right. Uh, use the case to organize your smalls. Um, so this is something I learned from another carrier. Um, right now, I've gotten in the habit of putting my smalls in with my flats. I take my my DPS on the side, and it's a, it takes a it, it takes about as long as putting them just in order in trays. I'd say um, it does make it take a little longer pulling down, but I like it out on the route. So it's a little bit of an extra step, but not too bad. What some people do is after they pull all their flats down, then they'll use the case to sort their spurs. So if you know your case pretty well, that's but not well enough to just put them in order without the case, it's not a bad way to go. And then you can use load truck as a backup. So you could use load truck to put them in order, but I think it's faster to use the case, whether if it's with the flats in there or after you pull the flats down. Just a way to do it. Try it out sometime. And it's not too bad. Um, if you misplace a package, park in a safe place and take a moment to organize. So I guess this is more of an out on the route tip, but I've gotten flustered in the past because I can't find a package. I know I've got a package for this address. Um, and in the past, what I've done is I'll just move on <laughs> and then come back after I find it. But now I found what usually works for me is just to pause, just start putting the packages in order. And then I usually come across it, you know? So I just start, okay, this is gonna be the one next one, this could be the next one, just in my vehicle, putting them in order, organizing them, and then I'll come across that one. So it doesn't, you don't get as flustered. <laughs> and you're not really wasting time because you're gonna be quicker at those next addresses. So that's a good way to do it. Okay, um, pulling down faster. So this is something I've got to work on. So again, some of this stuff will make it take longer on the route, depending on the person. And not all of this works for me. So here you go. Um, the less you case, the less you, there is to pull down. So again, take things on the side. It's going to take less time to pull down, right? Um, consider pulling flat. So I crisscross, but I know that takes time. If I would just pull flat, so you just, you know, grab them, especially if you have box holders in or if everything, everybody has a flat, just pull everything flat. You can clear out a case in like three or four minutes. Just, pew, 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 pew. I've seen people do this, um, especially if you only have flats in there. So that's a way to do it. But again, then on the route, you're kind of picking through a little bit. Okay, right, moving on. Uh, use buckets or larger trays. So rather than making small bundles or using small trays, if you use bigger trays or buckets, it can make the pulling down go faster. Again, um, it might mess up how you organize things in your vehicle. Um, the trays might be heavier, so that's something to consider, but it could make it faster to use a different type. So just consider the type of tray you're using. Is there a better one? Is there a better way to pull down? Okay, try different containers, see what works. Um, skip the rubber bands or rubber band larger chunks. So some people rubber band each thing at each address and it's time consuming, okay? They can get very good at it, don't get me wrong. But if you would, um, if you have a box holder, for example, you can reach in and grab like four or five of them and pull them out, put one rubber band around all of those, and then just break that apart as you wrap out and deliver those tacos, okay? I don't like doing it this way at all. I have everything crisscrossed, but if you do like using tacos, consider just making groups of tacos instead of each individual one, okay? Um, keep a tray or bucket as close as possible to what you're pulling. So, you know, if you can have it right in front of you, right underneath what you're pulling down, that's gonna make things easy, faster. I should say not necessarily easier. Um, and challenge yourself, you know, like, can I do this faster, right? Pull down in 10 minutes last time, can I do it in seven? That kind of thing. Okay, uh, load faster. So how to load your vehicle faster. Again, use good equipment and don't overload it. So I've done this before where I take a cart and I just load it up like it's the Grinch's sleigh and push it out, then things fall all over. <laughs> don't do that. Use the best equipment you can. Okay, or yeah, you have something with a bad wheel, whatever. Use the best equipment you can and don't overload it. You know, if you have to go back twice, that's better than dropping stuff for sure. Um, if you have a lot, would two trips make sense? Now I'm talking about out on the route. So there are times 
where I'll spend 20 minutes trying to shove everything in my vehicle? And would I be better off uh, leaving some behind and coming back to get it later, you know? Because if you get an overloaded vehicle, it's gonna be hard to find things. Things are gonna keep falling out every time you open up the door. So sometimes it might make sense to, to leave a little back and come back and get it later. Um, have a plan for loading, but be flexible, right? Uh, so this is where this goes. This is where this goes, right? And as long as you don't have a weird package, do it that way, right? <laughs> and then again, challenge yourself to load quickly. Hey, it took me five minutes last time. Can I do it in two? Um, again, a checklist would help. Would help. You don't want to forget something. So you know, do you have your scanner? Do you have this? Do you have that? That's Good morning. Thing. At this time, elementary classes, please make your way to the chapel. All right. Out on the. Out on the route. So out on the route, here are some things to save you time. Uh, leaving early is always a good start. You know, if you can leave early, hey, great. Um, if you get flustered, stop and organize. Like I said before, uh, if you start to feel yourself falling apart, just park in a safe spot, organize what you have left, take a breath and get back out there and do it, okay? Um, have a fully charged smartphone with good service and know how to use it. So know how to use Google Maps or your Apple map <laughs> whatever that's called, know how to use that stuff before you leave and make sure you have good service. That's going to save you, you know, it's okay to, you know, if you're not sure which way to turn, you can usually tell by looking at what side of the street the mailboxes are on, but if you don't know which way to turn, just pause for a minute, use your cell phone, don't just drive 10 miles out of your way and get all upset, okay, pause, use your cell phone, okay. All right, uh, consider a parcel run. So if you've got a lot, you know, some big wonky packages, maybe run those out before you go do the rest of the route so that you're not tripping over them all day. Um, work on small things. Uh, pulling up to the box, improving your delivery motion. So just get a little bit faster at each mailbox. You know, you don't want to go crazy, but if you can just have the mail ready, be quick about putting it in. You know, try to do it all in one motion, right? Just get smoother with all that stuff. It's gonna speed you up along the way. You know, think about it. If you have 600 boxes and you save one second in every box, right? Um, that's 10 minutes off your route, okay? And uh, avoid personal calls and texts. So you don't want those distractions. So if there's a way you can leave your personal business behind, that'd be great. Um, I knew one guy who would park by the side of the road for 10 minutes and take calls from his wife. That's not a good way to get done on time. Okay, um, don't be afraid to bring items back if you feel it's unsafe to deliver them. We aren't sure about where they go. So if, you know, if the address seems sketchy or there's a dog in your way or, you know, whatever, if it's not safe to deliver it, just don't worry about it, bring it back. Um, I drove down a long driveway just the other day and there was a river running across the driveway. So there was a river running across the driveway, so I couldn't deliver the package. It happens. <laughs> and then be efficient, not reckless. So again, uh, you do want to go fast, but you don't want to be unsafe. So just try to make yourself more efficient, more organized. Don't try to drive faster. <laughs> that's a bad, that's a bad way to do it. Okay. All right, and with that, uh, there you go. So those are my tips for getting faster on the route. Let me know what you think. Sorry about the interruptions there. <laughs> and have a great day. Um, <laughs> All right.